Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Here's a look at the two pieces we'll be working on for today. On the top of the buffet, you can see the finish is failing. Looks like watermarks. But the inside of the piece is really, really nice. There's no deep gouges or scratches. Over here on the china cabinet, again, other than the carved wood and there being no glass, it is in great condition. Now, uh, at the bottom on all the feet, there is some kind of brittleness going on because the feet are splitting, splitting, but we can fix all of that. On the inside of the piece, uh, it is clean. Um, there is no problem going on in the inside. So I think I'll leave the inside as is with that original uh, color, just clean it up a bit. Now it looks like it's also like that on the buffet. On the top drawer of the buffet, um, it is, we'll have to add a fresh lining but the drawers to the buffet are in quite good condition. Mm -hmm. I just need to throw away these pamphlets and get rid of the light bulbs, which I'll be keeping, that's left in the drawer. I'm ready to clean and I have TSP and warm water. I also have a little Dawn dish soap in, in the warm water and i have this brush normally i don't scrub but i don't know if this is the color or is this just the grease buildup so i'm going to use this scrub brush to scrub my piece clean And here, just as I thought, some of this is a wax grease type buildup. So I'm just gonna continue to scrub with my TSP and my Dawn dish soap. And we're gonna get this piece as clean as possible. And yes, normally when you're doing this type of clean, you wanna take the hardware off, but this hardware did not just screw off. Once I have my pieces scrubbed, I switch over to a towel and I begin to scrub with a towel to get those places where my brush wouldn't go. I'm going to continue my cleaning and scrubbing. I'm going to change the water, rinse the piece down, and we'll come back and we'll be ready for the next step. Good morning. I'm back and I've been forced into the garage. 
Now, I want to work on the legs. As you can see, that piece is broken. And I do have one of the pieces. It's also broken at the bottom. And I don't have that piece. So what I want to do is try to make a mold. And I saw another YouTuber do this. She used a hot glue gun and made the mold with the piece that she had. So I'm going to try to do that with my hot glue gun. The glue mold is drying and I took the screws out of the handles, but they're still not coming out. So I'm going to use my rubber mallet to just loosen up those handles and see can, if I can free them. So the knob has been drilled out here and glued into the hole and screwed. So now I just have to get the other ones out. Now here's my first broken piece that goes to the buffet. It needs to be glued back, back in place. I do have my Gorilla Glue here. I'm checking for the fit and I'm just gonna add my Gorilla Glue to the broken part, clamp it down and let it dry. Also, I noticed at the bottom, the nails are coming out, but that's okay. I'm gonna take my rubber mallet here. I wanna tap it back in place. Once I have them back in place, I'll take some screws and screw them in. I'll use the countersink screws to make sure that it won't show. And of course, I have my little helper, my husband, who will make sure that everything is straight and plumb. I also noticed a crack in the side of the wood. I don't see it on the outside, but what I'm doing is putting that same uh, Gorilla Glue down in those cracks, and I'll clamp them also to make sure that it's strong when I'm done. My husband said it was probably best to add a screw at the top as well, so which is the side, and I'll be adding that countersink screw on both sides. FYI, because this wood is so dry and brittle, you wanna make sure that you do a pilot hole before you add your screw. Now that I have my dresser back right side up, it's time to sand the top. Now I've checked and this is not a solid piece. It does have a veneer on, to, on top. So to keep from blowing through, I'm gonna use 120 grit sandpaper to sand the top of the piece. edges I'm using that same 120 grit sandpaper and I just want to sand around the edges of the, of the dresser again being careful that I don't blow through the veneer on the top Now I'm gonna move up to 180 grit sandpaper to smooth out the top. 
I'll go from an 80 to a 220 to make sure that everything is smooth as silk. While I have my sander out with the 180 grit sandpaper, I'll go ahead and scuff sand both my pieces. While sanding, I noticed on the china cabinet, some of the veneer on the side was, was loose. So I'm pulling back anything that's loose and I'll go ahead and fill it in later. As you can see, I'm done with the sanding and I took my painter's tape. I've taped off all of the hardware on both pieces and now I'm just taking a damp rag to wipe away all the dust. Using this damp cloth would also show me what the wood would look like once I add my stain and I absolutely love it. I'll also take my blower here and I'm just going to blow away the dust on the inside of the piece and any other areas where there might be dust lingering. time to use the Bondo. I'm taking my Bondo, I'm mixing it here on this piece of cardboard, and I'm filling in all of the holes from the hardware, as well as fill in those areas on the side of the china cabinet. I glued the missing piece on the leg. I also added a bondo on top, and now I want to bondo the other half. And just like that, I made my first layer of bondo and it is dry. I wanna smooth it back with the 80 grit sandpaper, and then we'll add a second layer to make sure everything is smooth. I'm gonna keep sanding and get it as smooth as, as possible. Here's a quick peek. I'm gonna add a second layer of Bondo to make sure it's smooth. I'm back to working on my pieces and I got so excited when applying my primer that I didn't turn on my camera. But I started off using my uh, electric sprayer. I bought it last year and I wanted to try out how to use it. And I really, really wasn't happy with how it worked. Um, this is just a cheaper one. It's called uh, High Tech. And um, it was like $40, but not quite, quite what I was looking for. So I got my first coat on um, by hand and I did roll it and I used a brush to put it on. And now I'm just adding my second coat and I switch from my regular primer to this oil based primers because I was having some bleed through. So I want to go ahead and get everything um, painted a second time with this oil based primer and then paint my china cabinet or prime my china cabinet. Now, I went to another estate sale, picked up a whole lot of other pieces, so my garage is a mess. So I'm gonna move everything back and get my china cabinet uh, painted today, or primed today.
So I have my second coat of oil base paint here on my buffet and I've taped off all my edges so it's ready for paint. And here on the china cabinet, it's been taped off and I have my first coat of primer. I also made the repair here on the side. Um, it's drying and I'm gonna give it about 15 minutes and sand it back. I'm gonna add a second coat of primer and come back when it's time for paint. The Bondo is dry and I just wanna give it a quick sand over to smooth it out. <laughs> There's still a few rough spots, so rather than mixing more Bondo, I'm going to use my wood filler here, my Gorilla wood filler, and I just want to try wood filling it, and then I'll go right back over it and smooth it out once again with my sander. Now it's time for paint. Today I'll be using paint by Country Chic. This is an all-in-one paint, even though I primed. I'm using the color Vanilla Frost. I have my paint here in a tray. I have a angle paintbrush, and I'll be using this to paint inside the decorative design. And I'll use my roller to roll the flat surfaces. I'm gonna continue adding my first coat of this vanilla frost paint to my both my pieces, let them dry, add a second coat and come back for the next step. Here everyone, this is a look at the hardware that I chose for my two pieces. Now because of the paint, the drawers are a little hard to come out. So I drilled the holes and now I just wanna uh, add my hardware. This will be, make it easy when I'm ready to pull my drawers in and out as I continue to work on the project. Now I have my quilt clear wax and I have this small wax brush. I want to wax both my pieces with the clear wax and then I'm gonna take a darker wax and go over the design. The clear wax is on and I took the plastic and I pulled it back on the top of my buffet. Now I'm ready to go ahead and add my color or my stain to the top. But before I do that, I want to take a damp cloth and I want to make sure that I wipe off any dust and debris. Plus I want to make sure that those pores and grains are open because I'm not going to condition. I'm just going to go right over the top with my stain. 
And here's the stain that I've chosen. This is very thin, and this is American Walnut. I'm going to use this on top of both my pieces. I'll be using a lint-free cloth to apply my stain. Once I have my stain mixed, I'm going to use my lint-free cloth to apply my stain, and I will be wearing rubber gloves to do so. Once I have the stain applied to the piece, I'll take long, even strokes to go across the top to make sure that everything is smoothed out. I'm back, and now I'm ready to use a dark wax to go over all of the designs on the pieces. Now, I've never done this before, so what I have here is my small paintbrush and I want to go and cut in between all of these creases and then I'll use a, a lint free cloth and wipe everything back. I've already tested it out on the first drawer but I just want to turn on the bright light so you can get a better idea of what it's looking like. Since getting the wax on this piece is such a lengthy process, I want to take a moment to update you guys on what's going on on the channel. Right now, we have about 460 subscribers. I need to have 500 to 1,000 to become a YouTube partner, so I need your help. I really need you guys to watch. Make sure you watch those hours because my hours are about at 2 thousand watch hours and I need about four thousand so continue to watch and make sure you share the videos as you know this type of content is really expensive to do and I live in the Midwest um, Northwest Indiana and the pieces don't sell for that much I do sell a few pieces but not that many so help me so I can continue to bring you great content like this. I do take my waxing brush and I go back with a clear wax to go over if the dark was too heavy. And you can also use your paint brush and go back and paint over it as well. All right, that was time consuming, but I got all of the wax on the piece and it's looking pretty good. Now I'm ready to protect my top. I have my wipe on poly in the satin and I'll be using it to protect the top of my piece. Now, uh, I don't have to do this, but because this is a buffet and it will be used a lot, I decided to go ahead and add this wipe on poly. I will be adding two coats of the wipe on poly sanding in between. The wipe on poly is really, really easy to use. I've used it many times before 
And like I said, if you haven't tried it and you, we do furniture all the time, you better get you some. I'm going to continue adding my first layer of wipe on poly to the top of my buffet. I'm going to let it dry, do a light sand, and add a second coat off camera. And we'll come back for the reveal. So don't go away. And here's a quick peek at what the pieces look like before. And here is a look at the after. I think both pieces turned out absolutely stunning. But you let me know, what do you think? Now, you guys know I don't have a workshop, so I'm in my garage and I did the best that I could do with the staging. But guess what? The staging doesn't matter when the piece is absolutely gorgeous. Because I'm in the garage, I'm getting a lot of shadows and you're probably seeing those on the camera, but the piece is so pretty even with the shadows. And if you're watching and you've enjoyed the content of this video, now it's time to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you remember the notification bell as well. To the top drawer of the buffet, I added a self-adhesive wallpaper to cover up the rough bottom after I moved the old wallpaper. And to the other drawers, I used my Howard's conditioner to condition the inside, the outside, and also the tracks so that they could slide easily. For a closer look at the top, that American walnut stain turned out absolutely beautiful. And with two coats of the polyurethane to top it off. And behind the door on the china cabinet, I left the original color. Again, I left all the drawers and all I did was condition the wood. I want to say thanks to everyone that's watching but before we go I want to give you guys a quick peek at the table and chairs that goes with this set I will be doing them in an upcoming video but this took so long I want to say it took me a week and maybe 18 hours to get these pieces hand painted so the table is going to take quite a bit as well there is some damage to the top of the table, but of course, I want to leave it natural to match the rest of the piece. And here's the chair. There is six of them, so I will be having a challenge to get them done. Some of them do have a little damage. They have some nicks and dings, and I'll have to straighten those out. Now the fabric on the chairs is really, really nice and I don't know if I want to get into reupholstering them. So if 
you want to see how the table and the chairs turn out, you got to have that notification bell on. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I want to say God bless to everyone watching. And also, guys, God bless the people that are in Hawaii. Let's continue to pray for them. Bye now. I'll see you in my next video.